All right, guys, FM20 beta is out. And oh my gosh, I've been waiting so long for this, as I'm sure all of you have been as well. It's literally just dropped. I've just downloaded it. I've just loaded the game up for the first time. And we are going to get started with my one and only save this year, Walks to the Prem, as we're going to try and take Kings Lynn from the Conference North up to the Premiership. This year, we're going back to the start, back to my hometown, Kings Lynn, with a tumultuous recent history after the club went bankrupt in 2009 but reforming in 2010. The club is now on the up, having been promoted to the Conference North for this season, the highest league they've ever played in. Can the hometown boy keep the good times going as we attempt to go from the walks to the Prem? And alright, here we are. You can see the game is all loaded up. We are in what looks like Hashtag United's dressing room. Not quite sure why we're there, but... Oh well, and let's go in to the career, load the game up, and let's have a look. Let's get us all the way down to the Vanarama North, and where are we? There we are, Kings Lynn. Let's go, let's go advanced setup. Let's see how many leagues this thinks my laptop can handle. And, ooh, Kev wasn't wrong in his video. The line does move quite a bit faster than how it did last year. And so, yeah, we want all the leagues in England. Uh, we probably want quite a few from all over Europe, don't we? So let's go England, France, Germany, Italy. Uh, do do we want do we want the Irish leagues? See if we can pick up some players from down there. It's suggesting that we do. So that's what we're going to start off with for the time being. But obviously, as the save goes along. We might add in some more countries and some more leagues. So we've got England, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, uh, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Spain. And so let's go and crack on. And we're going to start on the 1st of July. No, 1st of July is not an option anymore. Uh, we're going to go early pre-season. And I think we're going to add... We're going to leave everything as it is there. So, yep. Yeah. So, this does still look pretty much the same as last year. And so, yeah, I'm very excited for this. I'm really, really excited for this. I kind of fell out of love with FM19 sometime around August, September. I just stopped playing it. And so, yeah, I'm really bang up for this. This should be very, very good. I'm really looking forward to getting into the club vision and the player promises and maybe trying to develop some youth players for the first time ever in any FM. That could be very, very nice. Alright guys, game's loaded up now. And so, as you can see, we're just setting up our profile. I have already set this up as the game loaded up for the first time. And so we're going to leave everything like this. We're not going to have any coaching qualifications. Or oh, let's see what it suggests. For Kingsley, it suggests National B. Is that quite low? I'm going to go National C and Sunday League Footballer. I'm going to leave it at that. But I am going to have my manage, management style focus as, what shall we say? I'm going to say Motivator. That's what I normally use. And that, I think, gets the best out of the players. So we're going to go for that. And then let's see what is next. Oh, I like this screen. I like this screen a lot, people. Here we go. Kingsley Town Higher Gaming. Kingsley Town have today confirmed the appointment of Bad Jokes as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the 28-year-old who has recently spent time away from club football. And I've got a one-year deal on a £525 a week deal. That's not too bad. And he replaces previous manager Ian Culverhouse. Sorry, fella. You're doing a fantastic job in real life. But 
it's time for me to take over and to lead us to the promised land. And so this screen as well is very nice. I'd like to formally welcome you to Kings Lynn to get you acquainted with your new surroundings. You'll receive our introductory welcome pack. Okay. One star reputation. Media prediction of 12. First time in the Conference North in about 10 years. I, I'd say 12 is a little bit high. But you never know. They have been rocking it in real life. If you don't know, Kings Lynn are up and around the top of the table in the Vanarama North IRL. So maybe, maybe if I can replicate that, that would be very nice. And so club background. Founded in 2010, Kings Lynn are a semi-pro club currently playing in the Manorama National League North. Historically, Kings Lynn have also been known as Kings Lynn X EXT. That means they're no longer in business. That was very sad when the original team went out of business. I was still living around Kings Lynn at the time. And yeah, not the best of times back then. But yep, Kings Lynn booked their place in the National League North by winning promotion from the Southern League Premier last season. Yep, the club played their home games at the Walks, but they possess poor training and poor youth facilities. We're going to be changing that, hopefully, over the time of this save. The club is affectionately known as the Linnets, yep. Having enjoyed success as recently as 2013, the Linnets are a club with a growing history. Kingsland won the seventh tier for the only time in 2008, that was of course the old club, and were runners-up three times, won the eighth tier in 04 and 2013, and won the CSS Challenge Cup in 2005, and finished runners-up once. And so, yep, let's go on to that. Come on, what's next? Ooh. This is... Is this the, the chairman's idea of who the, of who the best player is? Of who the best team is, sorry? Uh, we've got Gas, Marriott, Carey, Clunan, Payne, Jarvis, Fox, Fryer, Smith, Jones and Street. And we've got one player on loan, Alfie Payne, on loan from Norwich until the end of the season. And I do like down here, Al... These little things flash and these little different things change. That is quite cool. And oh, here we go. Here we go. Club vision. What is Stephen Cleave got up his sleeve for us? So, favoured is signed players under the age of 23. Not that important. Not that important there. You can see there they've got the four different bars. One is take it or leave it. Four, I'm guessing, is very, very important. Don't you dare mess it up or you'll be out of a job quicker than I can say, Harry Redknapp. So, work within a, wa work within a wage budget is very, very important. Cannot be going out of that. And so, for this current season, we've got to finish in the top half of the Manorama National League. FA Cup reached the first round. That's going to be difficult. Kingsland had did not do it in real life, so we've got to be doing better than that in order to keep the chairman happy. FM trophy, FA trophy, even reached the second round minimum. Two stars, well stars. What am I saying stars for? Two little bars, and so that's preferred. Again, take it or leave it. Not the most important thing ever. My current contract ends at the end of this season. But for every season after this, in the next five years, they want us to at least be getting into the National League North playoffs. So we're only allowed one season of stabilisation before we've got to be trying to get promoted. Going to be a challenge. This is going to be a challenge, people. Uh, arrangements. Schedule a press conference to meet the media. Yep. Arrange an intra-squad friendly. Yep, why not? And get an advice report from the backroom staff. Why not? This is all stuff that was in the game previously. But it's all been co uh, collaborated into one screen. Into one little thing before you join the club. So I do really like that. I'm hoping that when you change clubs. Not that I'm hoping to here. But you know, it just as far as the game goes. When you change clubs. I'm hoping that you might be able to see that before you take the job on. That would be quite nice. So you can kind of make your decisions on what teams you want to manage based on their club vision. I'm hoping that is the case. 
And so here we go. Kingsley have appointed Gaming as their manager. And Stewart's contract is about to expire. And that's Nathan Stewart. He's a 20-year-old midfielder. Two-star ability. Three, maybe four-star ability. But uh, we're being recommended not to offer him a new contract. Okay. Let's have a look at him. First player we're going to be having a look at this year. He's, a, he, he's just a bog-standard central midfielder. Doesn't look that good, does he? It's been a while since I've managed down at this level. I did try Met Police last season, and that went horribly wrong. So my, my skills down at this level are not the best. I'm not quite sure what kind of attribute range we should be looking for. If you know a decent attribute range for down at this level, please let me know down in the comments. Would be beautiful to get some comments on this first video. And as well as that, while we're talking about comments and that, if you could please pop a massive thumbs up down below and, and leave and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thumbs up and new subscribers on episode ones of new series really do help channels out. So please, please do do that. And yep, tactics induction. Uh, we'll do the induction. I don't think it's that different from last year. But just so you boys can have a look, just in case any of you are new to FM. So we've got choose a tactical style. Pretty much all the same as last year, I think. Not any there that are looking any different. But what I do like is this little addition here. The fun. That means that's what your coach or your assistant manager is suggesting you play. And rather, rather luckily, the one I what the, the one style of play I like to play is wing play. So that's the one I would be using. And so next up is let's set up a tactic. And like I say, I do like wing play, but I do like creating my own style as well. But we are going to go with a normal four four two. I reckon it's it's, it's non league football. You don't want to be going too advanced with that. And so your creative tactic will become the primary train tactic. This will be your club's tactical identity and will aid your assistant in setting up weekly schedules. And you can also create two other tactics, still the same as last year. And so can't click any of this right now. But it's just saying tactics are broken down into three main areas. In possession, in transition and out of possession. Still, like I say, all the same as last year. And can I change any of this yet? Nope. So let's just go next. Yeah, this is all the same as last year. Nothing changed there. So your tactic is now, re is now ready to go. I wasn't allowed to change anything. And so, yeah, here we go. Now can I change stuff? All right, and this induction is rather long. For people who already know how to play FM, that was rather long. And so here we go. I work within Wade's budget. Yep, yeah, can't. I can't really change any of this, can I? Nope, okay. And so, yeah, well, I've got no choice but to accept it. As all, oh, we've just gone onto the league table there. Oh, you can click negotiate there. But you know what? I'm pretty happy. Other than the FA Cup, let's see if we can get them to minimise the FA Cup one. No? Okay, so the only thing I can change is for something that's going to be starting after my contract has ended. So that's not brilliant. Uh, let's go recall the top half finish next year. See what they say to that. They're happy with that. That is very, very good. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Recall the top half finish. And then every season after that is changed. So it goes to maintain a top half finish. I'm happy with that. That's quite nice how that changes. And so, pre-season preparation. Initial pre-season schedule. All I can do is normal. I'm guessing because we're semi-pro. And we've got a few friendlies against other local teams. I'll be changing that. I'll be getting some big teams down to the walks. Or at least trying to. So we can build up our finances. And pre-season fitness report. Following players have reported back in top condition. Bastock, Jarvis, Gas, McCauley and Adam Marriott. And that's just a usual transfer window in progress one. And now introductory advice summary. 
Request youth facilities. Let's first have a look, see how much money we got. 101 grand. I'm not going to be worrying too much about youth facilities just yet. And Michael Clun. Michael Clunan? Michael Clunan? Oh, I have no idea how to say his name. Clunan. Clunan. I'm going to say that. I don't know why I went Scottish. He's not even Scottish. He's English. And so he's four-star current ability and four-star potential at 25 years old. We're being recommended to make him the captain. So what's his leadership like? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Where is it? Leadership 14. That's not bad. We will take that on and we will apply that. And Chris Smith, make him the vice captain. Leadership of 11. But he is very much one of our best players. Four and a half star, current and potential ability. He looks the absolute balls, doesn't he? So let's go make him the vice captain. And suitable direct free kick takers. Uh, all this stuff I'm going to look at off camera. I just want to try and get through this first video. We're going to bring you the intra squad friendly. And then we'll leave it there for today. After we've had a look at everything else. So, uh, Development Centre. I think that's the, the next thing we want to have a look at. And so, yeah, let's take the induction for this. Because this is new. So, this is your at-a-glance look at everything to do with player development at the club. It's broken down into key areas to give you the information you need when you need it. And so, next. The first bit is the, this breakdown of any players out on loan. And the strength of your youth team provides a succinct and informative summary, allowing you to take action where required. And so we've got nobody out on loan. The under-23s are below average, as are the under-18s. And so there are a group of youngsters here who, who are close to being ready for the first team in the under-23s. But we haven't got many with decent potential. And so we've got a rather mediocre development squad at both age levels. That's a little bit disappointing. No first team candidates as of yet. And ones to watch. Ross Barrows could become a quality player and potentially as good as Aaron Jones. Okay. And Nathan Stewart could become a star player and potentially as good as Michael Clunan. And so let's go next. And yet I've already shown you that. And ahead of match day and on the day of the game itself, you can play an active role in team selection too. Neil Fryer is flexible to incorporate any players you want to see play, as well as adjusting to any demands you might have. Nice, I like somebody that can bow to my demands. And so, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. throughout the season you'll also find little nuggets of information in here that will help you to identify next player to come through the ranks. Check in regularly to see what the staff club, what the club, what the staff have to say, and you'll be better informed for doing so. And um, where where we have players out on loan, the backroom team are here to help look after them and oversee their progress to make sure they're getting as much out of loan as we need them to. So that's very nice. And what I do like is this. This is very good. How you can see right here, nice and easily. What the agreed playing time is for players you've got in and out on loan. And what they're actually playing. So that is going to be very good for keeping an eye on your players that are out on loan. And yep, this is where you'll find the list. So that is very good. And yep, that I just said about. Pick a player from the loan list to get more information about their loan move. It's important to make sure things are going to plan in order to maximise the benefits of their temporary stay elsewhere. And there's even more detail on every player's individual page too. Okay. And yep. Yeah. And loan suggestions. Uh, we want to make sure our young players are being suitably challenged. And so this is where somebody will say, oh, we've got a young player in here. We need them to go out on loan because they're not going to get first team football with us. So that I do, I do really like how it's all on the one screen. Um, yeah, we're going to leave outgoing development loans and youth team training to the backroom staff. And so yeah, that all looks very, very good. Let's go, let's go and set up our tactic. Let's go and set up our tactic. So let's go, 
We're going to go positive. I feel like we want to be positive. Let's go short of passing, but quicker. And hit early crosses. Focus play down the wings. And in transition, when possession has been lost, regroup. And counter when we do win the ball back. And goalkeeper distributes the ball quickly out to the wings. And then possession. I, f I think we want a deep line. I think we want a deep line. And yep, leave that like that. Everything there looks good. Let's go and have a look at the team report. Let's have a look at the assistance report. And so, strengths, crossing, team tends to mark well. There's an impressive standard of passing quality amongst this group of players. That's very nice to know. Goalkeepers in their team generally command their area well. Goalkeepers are more than capable when facing one-on-ones. The players tend to have an impressive first touch, which reinforces their technical quality. The team in general possess a high level of technique. This is a closely knit group of players. And so there's a lot of strengths here. There is a lot of strengths here. Aaron Jones is very good at right back. Sam Kelly is one of three good options on the left of midfield. And we've got plenty of room in the wage budget with 750 quid left. Very nice. First thing I'm going to do is try and get some uh, affiliates. Try and get a parent club. So we can try and get some young players in on loan. And there's a number of a number of talented young prospects, including Barrows, Carey and Lim, in at the club. And so your weaknesses, heading, work rate, that's a little bit worrying. I'm going to be wanting to improve the work rate. And stamina, okay, stamina we're going to have to work on. And we've only got 6k left in the transfer budget. But I think down at this level, that's not terrible. That's a decent amount of money. We should be able to get players in on loan or in on free, which is mostly what I'm going to be looking at. And so, yep, yeah, I'm all happy with that. Let's go into the tactics. And I want to have a look at this selection advice as well. Because you can see we've already got a team picked for us. So let's just go. If you have a look at this selection advice, can that be dragged? No, it can't. I would like it if that screen could be dragged. So you could maybe see it against a team you've already got. That's just a little something that I would like. But here we go. Uh, that green, is that because Fryett's not currently in the team? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's a quick, easy way of seeing who is in the team and who they're saying you should change. And so we've got Bastock or Fryett to give us an opinion. And they're both saying put put fire in but leave everybody else as is so that's what we're going to do and if you press use use this use the suggested squad easy for me to say it does change it for you so that is very nice and let's have a look at these players Alfie Payne four and a half star Adam Marriott is four and a half star as well 13 finishing 12 penalty taking 12 technique 12 off the ball, 13 determination. And yeah, that all, he looks good. He looks like he could be a star player for someone maybe a couple leagues higher. Good player for most man of most man of armor national league sides. And Marriott fits very well into the core group of the squad. But he doesn't like big matches. That's a big minus. That is a big, big minus for me. Because if we're going to get this club up, we are going to have a lot of big games. And who's the other one? Alfie Payne is the other one we was going to have a look at. Five star. We are going to try and keep hold of him. Hopefully Norwich decide to get rid of him at the end of the season. And we can keep hold of him. Because that's another new feature. I'm not sure if, any, if you know about it. But a new feature is if somebody gets released from a club, they're more likely to look for clubs in the local area. So we might be able to pick a few players up who get released from Norwich. You never know. That would be quite nice. And so, yeah, he's five star. 11 first touch, 14 determination, 11 anticipation, 11 balance, and 12 work rate. And so, yep, that is all looking very, very good. If there is anything else you want me to have a look at 
in the next video please do again let me know down below I'm very much looking forward to this series and I want it to be a dialogue between me and you guys watching so if there ever is anything you want to see please do just let me know and I'll be very happy to bring that to you and here we go again he's showing you it on match day how you are going to get a report on who your assistant manager or your staff think are going to be good to play on that particular day and oh yes yes oh, I'm so glad this is sewn up in this video I have been banging on for something like this for years and years and years so I'm finally so glad it's here it's the code of conduct ah oh, previously whenever somebody got sent off I would find them a week's wages and they would moan at me no you can't do that boss oh, I'm not very happy about that well now you can say to them you agree to it you muppet at the start of the season if they do kick off and what you are going to know is that I'm quite strict I am quite strict with all this I think everything should be at least a week's fine sent off for a straight red that's that might even be a two weeker yeah you know what two weeks for everything and I do like that again how that all changes as well when you change the earlier amount so that I do like and sent off for a second booking yeah let's see how the players like this let's go confirm and we and we can discuss that at the next team meeting is that going to be before the game or is that going to be in the next episode oh and here we are take we're going to take an induction in the team report why not i've started off with an overview of the squad's performance which i will keep updated as the season progresses and the report expands upon the squad depth here by listing everyone who can play in each position so yeah it's still pretty much the same as last year and yeah you can compare your team against anybody else in the league have we got have we got a player have we got the average highest average value in the league that's a little bit surprising let's let's check that out just before we do do anything else and yeah we do oh okay wasn't quite expecting that but okay oh and here we go dynamics team meeting this is where the code of conduct is going to come up from what i've seen in a few other people's videos so i know that not many of you may have heard of me so i wanted to personally in introduce myself and yep your reputation is sure to increase if you meet expectations that is very very good so i'm going to say i think we can finish in the top half and yep clunan's happy with that and now passionate and now do i go passionate about the code of conduct or do i go assertive i think i'm going to go assertive i've also finalized the code of conduct that you've all suggested this season i trust you all accepting all the rules and on board with the system for the upcoming campaign and yes they are they are happy with it phew i thought they was gonna moan and kick off and say you're being too strict boss but i'm happy with that so that's a great response thank you and yep everybody's happy that is how you get a squad of players on side and now oh here we go i'm going to leave backroom staff to do the general training for the time being and i'm going to leave everything to the backroom staff that's actually one more thing i've got to look at i'm sorry this video is going a bit longer obviously it's episode one first look I want to try and get everything into the first video just so you guys can see it as soon as possible and there's another couple of friendlies but they're going to be getting changed and so what was the other thing I wanted to have a look at I was just thinking about it no idea there was something else I wanted to have a look at but it's gone if you can think what it is let me know down below and I'll get it in for the next video and oh here we go all right so we've got the first press conference let's go 
Hi, bad jokes. What are your initial thoughts on taking the Kinslin job? I'm very excited. I am. I am. Seriously, I'm so excited for this series. I hope you boys are as well. And girls, you never know. Might get a few females watching this. That would be nice. I think there's tremendous potential in this club. And I do. I do. I do. There's so much potential in Kinslin, I think. If you know the area, you'll know there is so much space around the ground for the ground to be, be built up. So I'm very much looking forward to hopefully bringing that to you in this save. Did you have any reservations? None whatsoever. I don't think age is important. I don't believe reputation has a part to play in this. And having been born in Kingsland, you must surely say some sort of connection. Yep, absolutely. And Kingsland have, have look, clearly have lofty ambitions. Yep, I'm confident in my managerial skills. I have an inherent level of trust in the players and the team are excited for a fresh start. The fans will play a massive part. I want to make a long term success out of this club and you have to work hard for your success. And yet Alfie Payne is a tremendous player and yet I think we're going to leave Clunan as captain. And I will be bringing some of my staff in over the coming days. Mm. I don't want to talk about that just right now. I've not got any plans to bring more staff in at the minute, but I might do. You never know. Uh, I'm not prepared to talk about transfer policy. With word coming out of the club that you have convinced the Kingsland board to do things your way. Oh, I like that. How confident are you of bringing success to the Walk Stadium? I'm guessing that's because I got them to change the club target for, this, for the following season. I think that's what that is down to. I think it's important to control what success looks like. So that is a new question, which is very cool. What are the pressures that come with trying to combine short-term success? Uh, it can be hard not to become fixated on the long term and forget that you need to put building blocks in place. Uh, short-term success has to come first. Has the club provided the resources for you? Yeah, I think, I think so. I think we've got a decent amount of money in order to be bringing players in. Uh, do you believe the club's long-term plan is real realistically attainable? Yes, I do. Have you been able to influence the club's long-term plans? I'm um, fortunate to be asked my thoughts, and I greatly respect the club for bringing me into those chats. And yep, absolutely, 100%, I'm on board with the long-term plans. What is it that makes you prepare to go all in? I genuinely believe there's untapped potential at this club. Yep, as I already said, I do really believe that. I think things work best when players feel valued as people as well as footballers. And absolutely, yeah, absolutely, the league is the main focus. And yeah, I enjoyed that press conference. I'm sure it's not going to take too long, though, before they become boring again. But for the time being, I liked that there was new questions and there was a variation on questions there. So I did quite enjoy that. And yet, we haven't got any of the official kits or anything like that yet. Like I say, games only just come out. That will all be sorted by the next episode, I should think. And so, yeah, let's go submit the team and let's get started. And here we are, game day. Here we go. And Kingsley under 23s going with the same tactic as us. So it'll be interesting to see if we can break them down. I'm going to go team talk. Let's go passionate. We're favourites for a reason. Don't know why I said that. I'm used to saying that in team talks. And also, I do like this, how you can delegate team talks to like someone else. So, if I do that, and then I go hand over to assistant, does he then do it? I think so. But not a whole lot of reaction there from the players. So, let's go and have a look at the match engine for this year. Oh, forgot about the noise. Forgot about the noise. Sorry, boys. Sorry, boys. And also, it looks like it's going quite slow. Let's speed it up a little bit. And match speed during text-only highlights, fastest. Match speed between highlights, very fast. And we'll leave the camera as it is. I can't remember how I used to have it, to be honest. So, let's go. It's Stuart to Cleaver. He goes over the top, and it's us in the blue. Uh, that's maybe a little bit too fast for my liking. So let's put that back down to medium. And now, six minutes in, it's us with a throw-in. Fox to Payne. He crosses it. 
goes to Clunan and the captain with the shot, but that goes wide. And now immediately after that, it's our under-23s getting the ball forward. We clear it. Goes into Stewart with the shot. And oh, well, our keeper's saved it. And we've just about dragged that out for a corner ball. Please don't let us lose the under-23s. That would be some absolutely diabolical start, that would. As we've cleared the ball. But the under-23s are coming at us again. Thankfully, nothing happens of it. Let's do my first shout and my most popular shout. But it's the first one of the new year. It's Fox with the ball as we have demanded more. The ball goes to Clunan again on the edge of the box. Plays it to Jones. Can he find a teammate? Back to Clunan. To Jones. To Clunan. To Payne. And Gas with it. Wide to Hawkins. Can he cross it in? He does. And it's Henderson on the edge of the box. And it's Chris Henderson scoring my first goal of FM20. Quite a nice goal there. Payne with it. Into Gas. And then Hawkins with a very nice cross. And Henderson let it bounce. Hit it on the half volley. And that is us 1-0 up within the first 12 minutes. And oh, we're seeing multiple highlights here. Okay. Never, I never thought he was offside. And now immediately following that, Clunan has tried to make it too. But the under-23s have just dragged that one away. And Henderson is on an 8.0 so far. He is by far the best player in the game. Hawkins to Clunan. And now the ball goes over the top again. But they are able to get the ball away. Carey into Hornwell. Hornwell? That's how you say it. And the ball goes over the top. And Stupple is in. Plays it back to Stewart. And all oh, shot just goes wide. Now Henderson loses the ball there. But he is fouled. And the referee is maybe going to be giving out a yellow card here. What is he going to be doing? Oh, it's a red card. Oh, he went in with two feet. He didn't, he didn't enter squad friendly. Maybe he might have to have a look at how aggressive that fella is. Because that's not a good way to show yourself off to your new manager. And now Stuffle, through the 10 men of the under 23s, he crosses the ball and it goes out wide. And we're going to change it here to key highlights just to get through this game. As now all oh, Gas tried for the shot there. Hit his own man and it came away. And now Gas with it. Can he cross it in? Nope. He goes to Jones. Back to Gas. He loses the ball there but it goes to Hawkins. Square it. He has. Goes to Henderson and his shot is blocked. And the ball goes away. And now Gas with a free kick. And oh, just over the top. Just that looked decent. And now James with the ball goes to Fox. And is he going to pass it? Yes, he is. Goes to Fryer. I think I'm going to zoom out a little bit in a minute. Marriott with the ball. He decides to try and square it. But it goes back to Payne. 2 0. 2-0, 2-0 to the main squad. 2-0 to the main squad. As let's have a look at this. Just nice simple ball here. Marriott's pass was deflected but landed for pain. And he was never, ever gonna miss that, was he boys? As here we go, under 23s with the header. Stopple, he's been getting in and behind our defence. He's the one who's looking the best for me. In the under 23 squad. And now Payne with the ball. Goes to Clunan. And he's in space but he goes wide to Jones. And can Jones cross the ball in? No he doesn't but he goes to Payne. 3-0. Result all wrapped up. Thankfully we're not going to be having an embarrassing defeat. To the young boys. 
and let's have a look at this Jones squared it Payne was in space and now get your predictions in the chat below what do you think this is going to end up as I'm going to say 5-0 I think as Alfie Payne has got two for us Henderson's got another one and I'm just going to leave the team as it is I'm very happy with the way things are going and then go in team talk and go start the second half one worrying part of this game is that both our strikers have not scored which is a little bit concerning and we haven't got any strikers to bring on for them so that's not the best let's get Henderson off for Kelly and let's get Jarvis on for Clunan I think we're gonna say and so let's see how them two can do for the last 20 minutes of the game just over 10 minutes left to go of the game the ball gets crossed out wide to Hawkins he plays it wide to Kelly and Kelly with the ball crosses it in goes to Marriott out wide goes to Fox with the cross Hawkins 4-0 yes boys we have absolutely demolished these under 23s as you would hope Kelly with the cross there Marriott headed it out and Fox with the second cross and Hawkins very very nicely there with the header he just couldn't miss it could he and there we are boys 4-0 win pretty routine as you would expect let's go into the dressing room let's tell the lads that was a good result and go in the team talk and that is where we're gonna leave it guys hope you've enjoyed that video pop a mahoosive thumbs up down below if you're excited for the series and if you're really super duper excited like me subscribe to the channel down below we are just a few subs off the 500 mark so if we could hit that in the next few days that would be absolutely amazing follow me on twitter at bad jokes gaming and also join the passion for fm discord we've got some awesome stuff lined up for that particular discord and visit the passion for fm website as well i've got a video coming out tomorrow which is going to be really good for all you guys who want to know how to get the real names in there and that's going to be brought to you by passion for fm i am part of their content creator team and so yeah that's more than enough waffling from me for one day and i shall see you next time bye